Hello everyone, Stephen here from Celtic Telescopes again. Today we're going to unbox and have a route around in a Skywatcher Heritage 130 tabletop Dobsonia. A heritage range, hugely popular range from Skywatcher with beginner scopes. Um, so yeah, let's get over there and let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to unbox a Heritage 130P from Skywatcher. It's part of the Skywatcher Heritage tabletop range. All of them will be relatively the same unboxing them and all the accessories that they get. Um, there's the Heritage 76, the slightly larger Heritage 100, bigger again, and the one that we're doing now is the 130. And then you have the Heritage 150, which is available manual or on the Virtuoso mount operated from a smartphone or a tablet. Um, there's also a Skymax 127 version of that one if you were interested more in the planetary and the lunar observing rather than the deep sky. Um, the Heritage range tend to be shorter focal length scopes so they do tend to be a bit better at your deep sky stuff rather than your planetary. Um, so that's always something to bear in mind if you're looking at getting one. But anyway, let's get over here, let's get to it and open it up. Right, here's what we have. When it's dropped to you, you get a box exactly like this and inside it is another coloured box which we'll have a look at now in a second. Right, let's get to it. So here we have, open it up, inside we have our coloured -y box exactly like that and we'll now get that out of there and get it open too. Right, let's get this thing open. This thing open. Don't forget, if you like the channel, if you like the content, and there'll be loads more coming, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the notification button, and you'll be notified when the new videos go up. So, piece of foam, over the top, grand, keeps it nice and safe, keeps it protected. Next thing out then is your instruction book. We have a box here, with your accessories in it. And then we have the telescope itself, so we'll carefully take him out. Pretty much ready to go in the box. And he is also on a load of foam. And that's him. Right, here he is unboxed. So, first thing we have to do is loosen up the thumb screw here, slide the telescope up in the clamp. Tighten them on. Remove that piece of foam. We don't need him anymore. And here's our telescope. So loosen up these two small little screws and extend till you hear the click. Tighten them up. Job done. Now you can remove your warning. Never look at the sun with a telescope without the proper filtration. And yes, for those of you wondering, that is the M50 behind us there. You can see the M50 day in, day out, see what the traffic is like. Might even do an update for you guys, like it's not what the traffic is like on various days. But anyway, here's our telescope. So, here's your focuser. It's a helical focuser, so it spins the focus rather than your traditional type that would have the wheel. You have your cap on the top, like any other cap. Secondary mirrors in there as well. And so what we want to do is loosen this knob over here so that we can move the telescope and you'll see how it moves. So it rotates on the base like this and it rotates up and down like this. Okay, so that's how the telescope works. So that's how we get get away with this type of scope without the tripod. It swivels on the Dobsonian base and it moves up and down. So fairly easy to use. Let's go through what is in the box then of accessories that we have here and see what way we can actually get started with observing with the scope. So what's in the box? We have 10mm eyepiece which is your higher magnification of the two and a 25mm eyepiece which is your lower magnification of the two. Also in here wrapped up in bubble wrap is your finder scope. So let's get him unwrapped out of the bag And we'll put them up on the telescope now. So, 
it has a slider. I don't know where you guys can see that. There's a slider there. Basically, you put them up here, you slide them on, and you tighten up those two screws. Okay, so we'll do that now in a sec. Right, let's get this on. So, there's these little two things. So you loosen them with a screwdriver till they're a little bit loose. Slide it on then. And then once you have them on, get your screwdriver and just knit them up. Nice and easy. Doesn't have to be mad tight. And that's how to put your finder scope on. Right, here's our two white pieces. And your 25 and your 10. Both of them come with caps and that. So, when you're looking for anything or setting up your scope, you'd always start with the 25, the wider field of view. So, you basically slide them into the focus like that. Tighten up your thumb screws, two of them there. Take off your cap, ready to go. So, the next task we have is setting up the telescope. It's always advisable to set it up in the daytime. Obviously pointing on the side of the sky that the sun isn't in order to get your finder scope aligned and just get used to focusing the telescope. With this one, it's a helical focuser that spins and it just gets you familiar so that when you go out at night, you're not fumbling around in the dark trying to get the thing working. So first thing we need to do is find something to focus on. So out the window here, there's loads of like lampposts and lights and all of that. I'm gonna line up the finder scope by pointing the telescope at one of the lampposts, the top of it, like the light end of it, where the bulb is, and I'm going to get it into the eyepiece here and get it focused good. And once I have it smack bang in the center of that, the next task I need to do then is to use the adjuster here and the adjuster on the bottom so that the red dot in the center of the finder scope is adjusted to be looking at exactly what is in the eyepiece here. That's the line in your finder scope. This is crucial for when you go out at night, when you go looking for stuff, you find it in the red dot finder and it should be in the eyepiece then. Okay? So that's step number one. Get that finder scope aligned. Step number two then is, for this one you need to find something that is ideally more than a kilometer away, as far away as possible. Distant mountain top, very, very distant lamppost or electrical pole or something. And what you're doing then is you're putting in your 25mm eyepiece and you're just getting the thing focused. So you'll have to change the focus from something that was just outside the window here no more than a couple of hundred meters away. So when you find that object and you get it focused, you'll be close enough to infinity focus so that when you go out at night and you find the moon in your finder scope, you look in here, it should be close to, if not bang on, crisp and sharp, okay? Once you're happy you've had a look at the moon in it and you're out at night, you're using it away, Obviously you want to interchange your eyepieces, so you swap out one, you put in the other, you tighten it up, and if you've gone to a higher magnification, you should be zoomed in a bit more on the target that you're looking at. So they're the two important steps that people need to look at when they're getting the telescope set up. Set it up in the daytime, point it away from the sun, find a distant object, align your finder scope, learn how to focus with the eyepieces, Switch eyepieces, you'll probably have to tweak the focus slightly between the two, and that's essentially it. When you go out at night then, start with the easy targets like the moon, start with the uh, Jupiter and Saturn if they're up, I think they're gone now, just about. Um, any bright star clusters you can see, any bright stars, and just get using the telescope. Because like we always say, the best telescope is the one that you use the most. Here's a quick look, looking straight down the, the front of the scope essentially. You have your secondary mirror here, your primary mirror down there. It's a 130mm scope, so it's a decent amount of size, especially for a beginner. Um, and that's essentially how your scope is. There's your tube. To collapse it back again, you just loosen these, push it down, get your cap back on, and if there's an eyepiece happening to be in it there, just cap the eyepiece. Make sure you turn your red dot off. So, at some stage into the future, your reflector is going to need to be collimated. You're going to need to learn how to collimate it, okay? Um, it's not too difficult. We will do it in another video. But just so you know the kind of things you're looking at, for collimating this scope, you have three screws up the front in there. And at the back, at the bottom, you have three adjusters and three locks. 
So it's a fully collimatable scope. You will eventually have to learn how to do it. Um, and yeah, we'll do a video on that too. So that's our Skywatcher Heritage 130P and indeed that just about probably covers most of the Heritage range anyway um, with regards to their unboxing and their setup and all of that and um, you just have the various different sizes at various different budgets. Um, so like I said earlier if you like the content subscribe hit the notification button and yeah keep up to date on new content. We'll see you later. Cheers!